The story of Peter and Jesus' conversation after breakfast on the beach after Jesus' resurrection is among the most vivid stories in the entire New Testament. We can quote pieces of it by heart. Feed my sheep, says Jesus. But it pays to attend to the entire story, for it says more than just meets the eye. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. Today we finish our tour of the various appearances of Jesus after the resurrection as the different gospel writers tell it. As we've seen, there are both similarities and differences in the gospel accounts, and some of the stories are unique to one gospel account. The story of the breakfast on the beach on the Sea of Galilee is one of those stories. It is unique to the Gospel of John. You'll recall that the earlier encounters between the risen Jesus and the disciples that John records happen in Jerusalem before the disciples then return to the region of Galilee. In yesterday's episode, we saw an apparently despondent group of disciples heading out at night to go fishing. At daybreak, they see a figure on the beach about a hundred yards distant. He tells them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat, and after having had no luck all night, they are suddenly faced with nets full of fish. After one of the disciples says that it is the Lord, the Lord speaking, Peter leaves the boat and swims ashore. When the rest of them arrive ashore, Jesus cooks them a breakfast of bread and fish. Now we pick up the story after breakfast. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After he said this, he said, Follow me. I can't tackle every question about this passage today. For example, what or who is Jesus referring to when he says, do you love me more than these? Does he mean, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Does he mean, do you love me more than you love these other disciples? Or perhaps does he mean, do you love me more than you love your fishing equipment? It's really hard to know and actually doesn't make a huge difference. What is important, I believe, is the fact that Jesus asks this question three times, apparently to Peter's hurt. He asks him whether he loves Jesus. All four Gospel writers tell the story of Peter having denied knowing Jesus three times in the night hours between Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. The fact that all four not only agree on that detail, but also find it, enough, find it important enough to report it, tells us of its significance the very disciple upon whom Jesus had promised to build his church broke under pressure and failed to own up to his relationship to Jesus. Now, after the resurrection, Jesus seems to offer Peter some much-needed redemption. It seems like a pretty good bet that the fact that he asks the question three times is a way to mirror the three denials, this time with three professions of Peter's love for Jesus. But as we know, words can be cheap. Just telling Jesus he loves him is not really enough. Jesus asks him for something concrete. He doesn't ask him for some mere token of his love. He doesn't ask him to do something bold and brave. No, he asks him to take care of the flock, to care for all those for whom Jesus cares. And that's what Jesus asks of us too. For in this case, 
Peter really represents the church as a whole and especially its leadership. As Christian believers, we have the duty to care for one another in Christ's name. We all do this only imperfectly, but we do it nevertheless. We visit the sick. We call on those who are lonely or missing in action, and we encourage one another when our energies begin to flag a little. When Jesus says to Peter, feed my sheep, he's also asking us to do no less. And now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.